Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about the struggle between eating for physical health and eating for mental or emotional health. If you don't already know, I've been chronically ill um, since 2010, so that is coming up on 12 years now. If you want to hear more about um, my story on that, you can click on this link here or down in the description. Currently, I have three videos talking about my story about my chronic illness, so if you're interested in that, definitely check those videos out. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about the, the struggle between eating for physical health and eating for mental health. And this is something that I've been struggling with a lot recently. Um, I would say that I don't have the best relationship with food and that's for a lot of reasons. One of the main reasons is that for that is that I have a hard time with restriction and that, that tends to push me towards you know, um, wanting to binge eat or wanting to eat unhealthy foods and stuff like that. I have an unhealthy relationship with food that has been skewed with all the different diets that I've tried to do. So it's kind of like what's good in one diet is maybe bad in another diet and lots of other things. And then all the rules, all the food rules that you accumulate <laughs> over time saying, oh, these foods are bad, these foods are good, that kind of messes with you and your relationship with food as well. And then also with the fact that I eat food and sometimes my body just, I have horrible symptoms afterwards. So it's kind of like, oh, eventually you learn, your body learns or your mind learns that food is bad. And so you don't, so you eventually learn to not enjoy the food. And then food is just a source of stress and everything. But yeah, I wanted to talk about this because being chronically ill, food is a very important part of staying healthy, remaining healthy, or, you know, maintaining your health and stuff. And I know that I'm not the only one that struggles with these issues and I know a lot of you who are watching these videos are also chronically ill as well, and you might be struggling with the food aspect of it, like I have. And it's crazy because I go in cycles. I make goals for myself and I start eating healthy and I'm doing great and I'm feeling wonderful. My energy is high and everything. And then eventually something, some sort of stressor or trigger happens and then I like fall off the wagon, so to speak. I hate that phrase, but I fall off whatever goals I've set for myself, whatever food goals I've set for myself. And I start feeling bad, but because I'm chronically ill, eating bad makes me feel bad. And then it takes a long time to recover after that. <laughs> so it's like, <sighs> so, and because of that, we have the struggle of eating for physical health because you need to give your body when you're chronically ill, you need to give your body the, bo the building blocks it needs, the nutrients it needs to function at its best so you feel great. But then you also have the emotional and mental aspect of it too, where you're either, you know, you're fighting, either you're fighting with restriction or you're <laughs> stressed and don't have the time to cook the healthiest foods or you just really need something convenient. And of course, convenient foods are not always the healthiest choice, you know, just Figuring out how to balance those two. And I want to cut to the chase here and say, I don't have the answer. <laughs> I, like if you're watching this video, hoping for an answer, I don't have an answer because I don't even have an answer for myself. But I just wanted to talk about this to let people know that if you struggle with this too, you're definitely not alone. And I know this can feel very isolating, especially if you don't have other people that understand this issue um, as well. And you know, my husband, this can eat anything. He, he can basically eat anything he wants. And I'm very jealous of that fact. And even though he's been very kind and trying to, you know, patient and trying to understand, he will never be able to fully understand the struggle that I have, but that is okay. But it, it would also be quite nice to know if other people struggle with this too. Like personally, I don't know anybody that struggles like this, but of course this is all not an open topic, but I really hope that this video will you know, at least help you know if you struggle with this too, that I struggle with this as well and that you're not alone with that. But yeah, the physicality of it. So for me personally, and my diet is always changing as I learn new things, but at this point I need to avoid gluten, I need to avoid nightshades, and I need to avoid onion. And then obviously alcohol, caffeine, 
um, sugar. And then also I eat a low carb diet. So I try not to eat as many carbs or limit my carbs to the evening only. And then I try to eat a lot of, I eat, try to eat high fat because I need the fat to compensate for the low carbness of my diet. So yeah, that is what I physically need to do in order to feel my best. Like carbs make me feel sleepy. They make me feel very slow. Gluten messes with my gut. Um, I have leaky gut. It makes me bloated. It doesn't, you know, my bowel movements are not great. Um, nightshades, they give me joint pain <laughs> and um, make my stomach hurt and stuff. And then onion makes me bloated. Like I have all these things and I know I should be avoiding these foods because they don't make me feel great. And if I go through a cycle where I'm eating so much of it, eventually I get to the tipping point in my body where my body just can't handle it. And then it just starts completely <laughs> falling apart. Like the joint pain gets bad. Um, I'm feeling really tired and then I end up not being motivated and I just don't feel great, you know, and I've kind of, <laughs> kind of hit that point, unfortunately, um, because I've been not so great with eating lately, but I, that's because I've been having a hard time doing the other, going to the other side of this, the emotional, mental side of this. I've been having a hard time keeping my, <laughs> keeping my stress low, keeping my emotions steady, um, my mental state where it needs to be in order to, for myself to thrive. And, you know, I think everybody emotional eats when you're stressed, you like to eat the carbs and eat things that are not great for you. Um, but I don't want to talk necessarily about that. I'm more talking about like the social, um, stress with eating a different diet than everybody else. And then like the mental stress of having to realize that you're going to have to make a lot of your foods from scratch. You can't rely on the convenience foods or takeout or, you know, meal plans or, you know, meal delivery plans or whatever frozen foods that everybody else can rely on when they're tired and stressed like that. But when you have a specific diet, you can't really rely on that, those things, especially when they're like, I know there are choices out there, but they're like more expensive and it's just like, Oh my goodness. I've just been, I've been so over it because I've been trying to decide whether I should continue making things from scratch and end up failing and feeling very stressed and stuff like that. Or finally going to the point where I find a meal plan that works for me. I found a couple, but they're expensive or pay somebody to make food for me. <laughs> so I have it ready. So it's like, that's kind of where I'm struggling at this point. So like trying to balance between two, cause I know it's important. Obviously it is important to eat for physical health because I don't like being in pain. I like remaining motivated and happy. <laughs> and I just feel a lot better about my life in general when I eat for my physical health, obviously. But then I have, then I was like, then what about the days where I'm not, I'm an emotional wreck or a mental wreck? You know, what am I just supposed to do on those days and stuff? So, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. And once again, like I don't have the answers for me and the answer is going to be different for everybody. Like you might have the same issues as I do, but the answer might be different for you. You know, you might not have the money to <laughs> splurge on paying someone to make food for you or you have allergies, like life threatening allergies. So you, of course you have to prioritize the physical health of it. Otherwise you're going to die, you know? So it's like the answer is going to be different for everybody on like what you need to prioritize more or how you're going to be able to balance out this more. So I definitely have to do a lot of thinking and more brainstorming for myself, trying to figure out how I can balance that because, you know, I know... Because honestly, when I don't work and when I am on top of my self-care and everything, I know I can eat well. But the problem is life is not always going to be perfect. I want to continue making these videos for you guys. This is basically my work. But I also need to prioritize my physical health as well. So it's just like the balance between the two. So yeah. But yeah. So yeah, the answer, I don't have the answer for me. You know, if you have any great ideas, if something, if you're having this struggle in your life, but you have the answer for yourself, definitely share it in the comments down below and let me know, because this is a work in progress for myself. 
I just wanted to post this video out there and say, if you struggle with this, you are not alone. We all have to decide what we're willing to sacrifice and what we're needing to prioritize and everything. So yeah, I'm sorry I don't have the answer for you, but I just want to let you know that you're not alone if you're in this boat. That is all that I have for this video. I, uh, I was going to say, I hope that you enjoyed it, but I don't know if you enjoyed it. This is kind of a, this is kind of a heavy topic. So, but I hope that you, um, got something from this video, even if it was just validation for your struggle. I hope you feel validated and I hope you feel seen. And I think that's probably good enough with that. So yeah, but yeah, I will see you all in the next video. Bye everybody.